Welcome back to SWGA Sickle Cell Awareness YouTube channel. I'm your personal patient advocate, Monica. I'm so excited about today's video because today is International Thalassemia Day. Let's get started with why this day was formed. The 8th of May was established in 1994 by the Thalassemia International Federation as the International Thalassemia Day in memory of George Ingliso and all thalassemia patients who are no longer with us. George, the son of TIF's president and founder, Mr. Panos Ingleso, belonged to the new generation of patients with thalassemia who had the privilege to receive quality therapy that allowed him to compete on equal terms with other people his age in school, receive higher education abroad, and return to Cyprus as a full-fledged scientist. Social prejudice had already started to fade when George and other patients with thalassemia began to succeed in the professional arena and have their own families. George and other patients' success was due to their own personal fight for personal and social achievement, but also to the ceaseless fight of their parents who not only confronted the social stigma that accompanied genetic conditions such as thalassemia at the time, but also participated and strengthened the Anemia Association, who, with the help of small group of doctors and nurses, also worked atrociously to raise social and state awareness about the condition and the needs of thalassemia patients. Now let's get into what beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia is a rare inherited blood disorder characterized by low levels of hemoglobin, a protein that resides in red blood cells and carries oxygen throughout the body. According to Bristol Myers, approximately 80 to 90 million people have the genetic mutation that causes one of three types of beta thalassemias. Let's get into the symptoms that are commonly found in thalassemia patients. General weakness or tiredness, pale and yellowish skin, darkening urine, slow growth, shortness of breath, bone deformities, and frequent inflammations. I don't experience that much ur darkening urine, but I do experience shortness of breath because I have bronchitis. I have been diagnosed with chronic bronchitis, so I am currently on Singulair, and I also take Aneuro. They've switched me from taking Spiriva to now I take Aneuro, and I go to weekly immune therapy to rebuild my immune system. And for bone deformity or massive bone loss, I am on 1,200 milligrams of calcium with 800 milligrams of vitamin D. And my immune specialists have prescriptions ready for me for when I have inflammation. And I take as needed, and I only take it when I have inflammation. If I don't have inflammation, I don't take it. I take it once the inflammation is gone, then I discontinue. One of the prognoses that comes with having beta thalassemia in more advanced cases, heart and liver problems such as congestive heart failure, which is what I have, abnormal heart rhythms, and liver fibrosis may be associated with severe beta thalassemia. And I do have that. The next thing that we're going to get into are the treatment options. The treatment options that are currently available for thalassemia patients are a medication called droxia hydrorea, bone marrow transplant, blood transfusions, treatment of iron accumulations. Doctors remove excess iron from the body. Some may use medications to treat iron crowding. It may be a liquid medicine that is given slowly under the skin or a contraceptive. Now let's get into some positive stuff like the healthy tips for thalassemia patients. Avoid taking iron tablets, vitamins, or other iron-containing supplements without doctor's supervision. 
eat a healthy, balanced diet, take folic acid, take care of personal hygiene to avoid infections, especially in cases where spleens is removed, make sure to take vaccines. Vaccinations are so important for thalassemia patients. My medical team makes sure I'm current on my vaccinations. Flu vaccinations you have to get every year. But other vaccinations you have to get every three to five years. It depends on what the vaccination is. Thalassemia patients have to make sure they stay current on their vaccinations. Next thing we're going to get into, this year's theme. The 2020 theme is the dawning of a new era for thalassemia. Time for a global effort to make novel therapies accessible and affordable to patients. What I say to that is telehealth, telemedicine, and e-health is the answer to that. And the reason that I say that is because thalassemia has been found to occur most frequently in people from Mediterranean countries, the Middle East, North Africa, India, and Central and Southeast Asia. At the end of this video, I will have clips and pictures of me receiving telehealth. Thank you. Until next time, stay hydrated and stay well.